happy. Okay, so uh, I'm at my high-tech scope here, guys. Uh, I've just got a wee test rig here set up for demonstration purposes. Um, what this actually is is a um, pulse generator. It's used for uh, testing fuel injectors. If you're doing a fuel injector balance test, you can uh, generate a single pulse or a number of pulses. The idea is you hook up the test rig to the injectors and see what the pressure drop actually is, and you can see if they're balanced. Then you can determine if the injectors are actually clogged, flowing properly, or uh, there's a restriction, clogged, or, or leaking even uh, by looking at the pressure gauge during the test. But that's not what this is about. This is actually about the scope function, and I've complained about the scope, guys, and there's plenty to complain about at the early stages of its development here. There's lots of glitches. and uh, But one thing that it does actually very well is the automatic measure function is fantastic. I think it can measure up to 42 different parameters. And uh, I'm just going to show you a, a couple of them in action here. And that's what this test setup is actually all about. So I'm just going to go to the trigger here and uh, I'm actually going to select normal because I want it to hold the, uh, the trace until we trigger it again. And uh, that, that way it'll hold the measurement function uh, uh, detail for us and we can discuss it briefly. So again, uh, the little rig here actually will generate a single pulse or a number of pulses. The pulse width will actually uh, vary depending on what mode you're actually in. And the various modes, the pulse width, uh, and the number of pulses are all detailed in the manual here, depending on what mode you're actually in. So let me actually just uh, show you in mode one here. Mode one is just a, a single generation, uh, a single pulse uh, is generated. You can see it's being held on the screen there, again, because we're in the normal mode uh, for the triggering. It won't refresh the screen until it's triggered, right? You can see where my triggers are both horizontally and vertically here, guys, on the screen. So that's the pulse. So that's great, but we don't know um, easily anyway. I mean, we can look at the voltage and we can look at the time-based scaling and we can do the math, right? Because again, Antec refuses to put the voltage on the, uh, um, on the y-axis, but I'm lazy. So let's let the rig actually do it for us, right? So let's go to the measurement function here. Again, there's like 42 different measurements, guys. Let's just take three for an example here, right? So let's select the max voltage. Let's select the positive width. Whoops, sorry, positive width and pulse count. And when you select a particular parameter, the, the definition actually comes up here as well. So I don't know all these definitions. You're, you're a better man than me if you do. So let's go with uh, that. So that's our three parameters actually there. And you can see it actually brings up the, uh, the max voltage. Again, the battery's below 12 volts, guys. This will drop about another volt. So it does make sense that the max voltage uh, and taking the scaling into account that the uh, max voltage there is 10 volts. The pulse width is 255 milliseconds and there's been one pulse count. So it'll actually count the number of pulses for us here. So we're in mode one. Mode one in the manual actually says that we should have what? When you press the pulse uh, switch, the rig will generate a single pulse, one pulse. Pulse width is about 250 milliseconds. So we've got one pulse and it's 255 milliseconds, just over. Right. Let me let me do it again. Screen will refresh. There you go. It's a different pulse, single pulse count, and I think it's just slightly slightly lower on the pulse width that time. So I think you get the idea here, guys. Right. So the modes are locked out, um, which makes sense from a from a balance standpoint. You wouldn't inadvertently want to change what mode you're in. So in order to change the mode, you have to actually remove power momentarily goes back to zero as you can see and one thing I should point out it will randomly generate a pulse when you actually apply power to this thing you should be aware of that if you're using this little rig here's the part number all sun here's the part number of the the little tester because it could affect your your testing right it will randomly generate a wee pulse there when you actually first apply power you should be aware of that um, so let's go to mode two so let's just read what we were expecting in mode two here. Mode two uh, should give us 50 pulses. And the pulse width should be, again, about, it doesn't specify, but about seven milliseconds. 
So let's just try that. You'll see the little green LED on the tester here when, the, when it's actually active. And the scope actually produces the number of pulses. Now I didn't change the time base here guys. Now obviously you can't see much detail there, but the idea is I wanted you to see the entire pulse train. If I start uh, adjusting the time base so you can see the pulses individually, you won't see the entire pulse train. That's why I've got it in this kind of um, less than ideal display, but again, it's for demonstration purposes. So the pulse count, 50, bang on. The pulse width, 7.2 milliseconds. And again, the max voltage is, is there. So this is the point to this video here, guys. This automatic measure function is actually quite good, quite good, and that could be quite useful. In the past, when I first used this and put it on my scope, believe you me, it's quite difficult to actually count these, right? If we actually go to mode three, Again, we'll remove the power. Again, this should update with just random rubbish. Be aware of that. Let's go to mode three. Let's see what we should expect. Mode three says uh, 100 pulses with a pulse width of about 3.5 milliseconds. So twice the number of pulses at half the width kind of makes sense, right? Again, let me show you. So you see the LED pulses are being generated and the scope paints it. So again, not a lot of detail, but I want to capture the entire uh, trace. How many did it count? 100. And very close on the pulse width, right? So let me just show you the last mode here, guys. Um, it's mode four. Again, remove the power. Again, expect the random nonsense. And again, <clears throat> it's important to know that, guys, because it could trigger your injectors momentarily throwing off your balance test. It's important to note, uh, note that. Um, Let's go to mode four. This is continuous. So we should just see a continuous pulse train that goes across the screen. <clears throat> Initially just at the trigger point, and it should keep going. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it does. So just fill in the screen. And you can see here, we have a pulse count. <clears throat> I guess that's probably just a function of the time base. The pulse width is 7.2 milliseconds. Mode four is continuous. If you read it here, Continuous pulses and the pulse width. Sorry, I'm trying to read it through my phone here. About seven milliseconds, so that kind of makes sense. Right, okay. So again, uh, the point to this, guys, was just the measure function. Again, there's about 42 different measurement functions there. I was just demonstrating three of them, and uh, really quite good. Uh, the best feature of the uh, Hantec T0-1000 scopes, as far as I'm concerned, is the automatic measure function. How many parameters can be measured, how accurate it appears to be. Again, this is no laboratory results here, guys. Just my kitchen uh, test bed here, right? But um, yeah, I'm quite impressed by that. That, that is, uh, that's quite good. Right, that's it. Um, again, there's a lot that's aggravating about that scope because there's lots of glitches still but it is good at what it is good at. That's it, boys. Cheers.